Good day, all you beautiful people. So today, let's go on with episode six and making a Lego Man leg. Now, this is my favorite Lego Man leg. It's from the pirate. He's got this peg leg, and I think it's really unique. And I want to do something like this for my tutorial. So we'll build one normal leg and we'll build one peg leg. Now, my thought here is that because we already have a steampunk hat, let's kind of build a steampunk peg leg. And this is kind of what I'm suggesting. On this side, let's make this like a machine bolt. So we'll make it go like this and then put a hex pattern in here like that. And on this part here, let's make this a machine screw. So we'll put threads all along here, like a nice aggressive thread pattern. And here, we'll just make this into like a nut, like a hex nut, with, of course, the hole in the bottom. What do you guys think? Do you want to do the normal leg, or do you want to do this uh, leg first? Ah, uh, you guys are awesome. I know you want to do this one. So let's move on. Now, if you noticed, I've made my cursor orange, and I've increased the size of my icons. Hopefully, this will help you guys see. So let me know if you think this is a good change or a bad change. So the first thing I'm going to do, like always, create new part design. Of course, create a body first. Then we'll go top. Then we will create sketch. And of course, the plane's right there waiting for us because we went to the top first. So the first thing we want to do, of course, pick a circle. Click and wait till we have that coincidental icon, not the coincidental icon, but this, the intersection. So this is, this is the guy we're looking for. That way we're nice locked into the middle. Next, of course, we want to give it a diameter. And you know what? I'm kind of feeling, let's go, let's go 3.2 millimeters. Let's see how we make out with that one. We can always make it bigger, right? So close and now what I want to do is I want to pad this out. Now, if you noticed here, I think it padded it up to the top. So let's just turn on my origins here. And you can kind of see that this was our origin. And of course it went up, but I want this to go down. So we can go here and we can hit reverse. Right? So down from that plane because we want to put our bolt head up here and of course our leg down here and I'll show you why it matters in a few minutes so for the length or for the height I'll show you what we want to do here let's put up a little reference man so we know that this is seven millimeters so I want half of that so I want 3.5 here and I know that this pad right here is 3.2 and overall, from here to here, is 14.72. So what I need to do is enter my formula mode, 14.72 millimeters. And we want to subtract 3.5, which is half the width of circle millimeters, and also subtract 3.2 for our bottom foot cup. And we end up at 8.2. We want to draw a pattern. That we're gonna spiral around this guy so let's just cl click to the front let's grab our xz plane here okay and you can tell we're at the bottom be all below it because there's our reference point right there so we're golden so let's grab now ah, let's grab a box and i'll put a box right here this is blocking the view so you can always click click this slice button and we'll just draw this guy out here for now, we'll close it up and I'll show you how this command works before we do any details. So there's two things we can do. We can either do an additive cut or additive sweep. So click here and you can see that it adds this guy in or alternately we can do a subtractive. Click there and you see it wants to subtract there. So if I hit okay, it cuts it out. So whichever one you do is up to you. They both kind of work the same. There's just one thing you have to be worried about. If you have another shape up here and you do a cut, it will cut into that shape. So if you notice how here I, I ended it there, but my height isn't proper, 
it can be cutting into there. So let's go back. Let's let's get rid of this guy and go back into our drawing and I'll show you what I really, really want to do. Click this guy here. Hopefully that will hide that. And I want to give it a more like a bolty looking pattern. So this would be at an angle. Because we already drew the box, I have my constraints here. So this is my horizontal. I can click there and hit delete, get rid of it. Click on this guy, delete, get rid of it. And now of course I can make give this an angle, which is what I really want. So the first thing we're gonna do is I wanna give make this one and this one the same angle. And let's go for our angular icon, which I can't find right now. Well, because I resized it, it's hiding it right there. One twenty degrees, and from here to here, I also want it one twenty degrees. Make it smaller. Make it smaller. And uh, this guy here, let's make that around one millimeter. Let's go point eight. I don't have this really planned out. I'm just trying things out. It's kind of a free flow. No, I did get that one right. Wanted to go from here to here. And you know what? Let's just make that two millimeters. So now we're, we only got two degrees of freedom and that's left and right and up and down. So let's make sure we're in this guy here. So I want to kind of go to, let's say, down here. I kind of want to start start this out earlier. Now there is a little bit of a bug. If you take this off this guy, you can end up with really weird shapes. So if weird stuff starts happening, make sure that at one point you're intersecting this. So I want to start him here. And now what I want to do is if you click on this guy here, you should be able to click the lock constraint. And what that will do is it will give you your horizontal constraint to this point, which is right, which is added it right there. And it will give you a vertical constraint to that point. So if you ever just want to place it and just lock it to a point, that's, that's your guy right there, lock constraint. So we'll close this guy up. And of course we will do our sweeping. Let's do it as a cut because that's what we're set up for. And you can see that's the shape it wants to take. And you know what? I'll just maybe change the pitch down. I think maybe two millimeters would be a little bit better. And look at that. I gotta say, that looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. Of course, a little part of it is going to be covered by our uh, bolt head there. Speaking of which, let's make that one happen. So let's click over to our right view. And we will add a sketch on this plane. YZ plane. Okay. And I will add a circle. So select the circle. Build that out. And of course, when I lock on to circles, just like last time, let me just undo this. And when I draw a circle, the biggest thing I want to make sure is that I am right in the middle. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my coincident mode. From doing Lego videos before or the previous video, we all know that this is seven millimeters. Beautiful. Let's pat it out. Now, I know that the length of this is 6.32 millimeters, but there is a little bit of a catch. If you go back to our Lego man here, there is a little bit of a cutout for this little crotch piece. So that means that this side is 0.3 millimeters shorter than that side. And I'll show you exactly how to extrude in two different directions. So here, if we select two directions, we now have two. See, one set a defaulted by 100, so it's nice and long. The other one is short, it's 10. And that's kind of nice because it kind of lets you know which one's which. So whoever did that in the uh, FreeCAD programming community, good go. I use that all the time, love it. So for the first one, which is going to be our shorter one, we want to go 6.32. And of course, I want to divide that by 2. And I want to subtract 0.3 millimeters from that. If you want to make sure that it did the math properly, there's your result up there. Believe it or not, it took me a while to catch on to that one. And of course, our other side, we're just going 6.32 millimeters divided by 2 because that one's a full length. And there you go. Now we have a shorter side and a longer side. 
So now I want to make the cutout for my hex head. So click on the surface, make a sketch on it. And here's a tool we haven't used before, which basically lets us create a polygon. And there's two versions of this tool. If you click down here, there's triangles and squares, and polygons, octagons, like all sorts of uh, patterns that you might want to use. And there's another one here that lets you select the amount of sides. So if you want to make like a 20 sided object, this is the one you would use. I'm going to go to hexagon. And as you can see, I can throw a hexagon down. The cool thing about this command is everything here is already constrained. It's already done for you. So it does all the heavy lifting for you. It's a beautiful command. A lot of times you might want this in a certain orientation so that it's aesthetically pleasing. Either like this or like that. So I actually like the way this looks a little bit better. So the way I would achieve that is I'll just grab one of the sides and I'll give it a constraint for a vertical. Now, because this is a four millimeter that will fit in there perfectly, I wanna constrain it by the size of this guy to this guy, because a four millimeter Allen key is perfectly four millimeters from, the, from any side. And there you go. Now we got a four millimeter. We might even be able to go to five millimeter, but you know what, four millimeter I think looks good. Then the next thing you wanna do is of course make our little pocket pocket this in and of course we want a length now the one we always like to do is up to first which will get us all the way up to the first phase which is here so from one of our other video we know that there's a peg that holds this in and the peg is 2.5 millimeters so this is where we can use this offset command here go two point if we, and if you go 2.5 millimeters and hit OK, nothing will happen. From some reason, you have to give it a negative value. So if I go negative 2.5 millimeters, it will make a two, it will be 2.5 millimeters from there. Anyways, so now that we're done with this part here, let's draw our little foot cup thing here. Yes, I've been watching too much Futurama. Bender calls it a foot cup. So this time, instead of using the uh, hexagon, let's use the regular polar. Click here and it would ask us for the number of sides. So you can change this to however amount you want, but in our case, we're going to go six. Click, make sure it's in the center and click it out. And just like last time, two degrees of freedom, which was one for how big it is and another one for rotation. So for this one, I want the, I think this kind of looks like a toe. I kind of don't want it to be flat footed in the front. I kind of wanted to give it a toe effect. So I'll click on this guy and again, just click, click here. And now we have that done. So now what I want to do is I want to give this a diameter and the diameter for a Lego block is 7.8 millimeters. So I'm, I give this 7.8 millimeters. Then I will know that my two farthest points, which would be this guy here and this guy here will still fit on a standard uh, Lego block. And now of course I'm constrained 100%. So you know what we're gonna do? Of course, here comes the pad action. Hot pad action. Kinda like the way that sounds. So let's go 3.2 millimeters, because that's the height we want. Boom. And of course, last, we wanna go here and sketch on it. And we gotta create our little peg hole. So make sure he's in the middle. Click here. I see my constraint here. So I know I'm perfectly in the center here. And of course, we'll give it a diameter, 4.8. We are 4.66, very close. And of course, we wanna make this a pocket now. Now, sometimes it does this. So I'll change this down to two millimeters. And the way I can trick it to showing up is I'll just click reverse and click reverse again. And then it will show the model back up. I think it was trying to split the model into two pieces. That's, you remember that error when we did the helmet where it says you're trying to make two bodies and it's not supported. That's that problem again. So now we got this and you know what? I like the way this looks. Well, actually there's one more thing we got to do. We almost forgot the hole right there. God, how's this peg leg going to attach to the Lego man? So let's just go to our left here, left, left, left side. Are you guys having an easier time following the cursor? Don't forget to let me know. I really want an answer to that question, guys. 
sorry, cancel that. Click on the face here. It's a little bit easier to see because it's green. Paint on it. And of course, we want to make this. And this hole was 2.36 millimeters. We'll give that the OK. We'll close it up. And of course, we are just going to make another pocket. And we can go through wall or we can go to up to face or up to first. And that's the one I like to use. And the reason I like to use up to first is in case I ever make this longer, it will automatically update the value. Same with that offset that I put in. We put in the offset for this cutout to go 1.5. It will always, no matter how much longer we make this, it will always be one or 2.5 away from that. Being intelligent with these commands can save you a lot of time, especially if you're ever editing your model afterwards. So let's add some flair. I mean, this looks good. I really like the way this looks, but you know what? This doesn't really look like a bolt yet. Most bolts have a fillet on the front. So they have a fillet here, so that angle's not as aggressive. And of course, there's a little bit of a fillet there in order to make it easier for the technician to put the Allen key in. So if I click on the face and I select that, look how messed up that looks. Oh no, because it's too close to the actual minimum. I think if I go minus three millimeters there, there you go. It's going to be a little bit friendlier. But you see this ugliness right here? I never did like that. So whenever that happens, I know I have to break. I just redo the fillet. And what it could be is because we were trying to fill it the whole face. So let's just select this guy here, fill it. And of course, I'm going to say uh, point, what was it before? Three. And it doesn't get a good fill it. I'm not, if anybody knows a quick way to fix that, to make these fillets like nice and buttery smooth, let me know. I'd really appreciate that. This is one of the reasons why I actually stopped using fillets in the first place because I don't like how they look. But you know what? I remember when SolidWorks had a large problem with fillets and chamfer. Anyways, the next thing I'd like to do is let's let's just chamfer this guy up here, make him look nice. And we'll give her a little bit of a chamfer and let's say no point one. It's more like a point two. There you go. See, that already looks better. And for artistic flair, let's give her a little bit of a chance for here. And I think that if we click here, let's just do it now. Let's do it the easy way. Click here, 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 here. here. And of course, I'm hoping I don't screw this up on the last click because that's always what seems to happen end up misclicking on the last one and having to do it all over again. Okay, so we got these all selected here and let's give her and I will go with the chamfer. Oh, that's a little too aggressive. How about 0.2? You know, that looks pretty good, but maybe it will go a little bit more aggressive. 0.3. And there we go, guys. We are done. So what do you think, guys? That's our Lego man. We're done. Aren't you glad we started on the peg leg? Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, maybe we could, should we do the same thing for the arms? Make two tutorials, make a custom arm, or do you want, just want to see how to mirror one arm? Anyways, guys, like always, just a reminder, if you like the content, send me a like. It really does help me. I'm noticing a lot more traffic on the channel, so YouTube doesn't hate me like it used to. Um, all, it's the best thing you guys can do to support my little channel. And you know what? Thank you very much for everybody that's been watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm really having a good time making these videos and uh, seeing those subscriber numbers go up just fills me with more and more ideas. So thank you for all your support. And you know what, guys? Like always, stay smart, stay safe.